In this chapter, we are going to cover compare tables, which are pretty much our formula editor in Einstein Analytics, and they're very, very important to consider when building dashboards, especially when you need to create your own derived measures or metrics and some more complex conditions on or at the designer level. So we are assuming we don't have access to the data layer and we are only able to do our needs or use cases using the designer. So we're gonna jump into an exercise, and this exercise is gonna cover how to create a period over period of the amounts, close amounts, by uh, as months roll. So just it's a trend through the months and uh, the amounts of the opportunities and just the period over period change. We go back to the edit mode of the dashboard. We could drag a chart or just create step, whichever way you want. Same data set. I'm going to call this period over period. I'm going to start with the basic elements. So first, I do know that I need sum of amount. And I do know the group by or the, the trend is gonna be across close date, year, month. So now I have each month, what's the amount of the opportunities? What I need more is the period over period change. So for example, nine compared to eight and what's the change? I can say, let me click on the drop down. there's nothing, let, let me click on the metric, there's nothing here that says period over period, all of these are available but just aggregates. So in these kind of situations, you immediately want to go to the compare table, which is under table mode. So you go to the compare table, and now you are in a new interface, so the drop down of the metric is actually changes. You have way much more options. We're gonna cover these later, uh, sorry, later on, but the ones I'm interested on uh, in are the clone column, which copies the column as is, added the column, add a filter. And this is very powerful because you can filter individual columns. So imagine you have last year compared to this year, and you have another formula, et cetera. In our case, I need to clone the column because just like Excel sheet, I just need to have the, the, the column to play around with. So first I clone the column, it copied it as is. Next, I'm going to click on the drop down and go to edit this column. This opens the right menu where I can add the new column. I can give it a new name, period over period, period over period, and I can look at the formulas or the functions available. First, the grayed out formula means I can write a simple formula like Excel. Just note they have to be capital letters. So for example, A divided by B, A minus B, etc. Now, obviously I'm using B. If I had ABC, then that, that would make sense. So those are just simple formulas. The other option is functions. So we have a lot of functions available here. Actually, a lot of these and more than just date, uh, sorry, date functions or number functions, we have string, uh, string functions, um, we have power, we have round, we have uh, square root, maybe not that much used. But again, there are a lot of functions. I encourage you to always take a look at these, what's available. You can select the fields associated with those. So you can see them right there. Uh, because sometimes you select a field and the ID name is different. So if I select stage, for example, the name is actually stage name in my formula. And the last bit is the f of x or the prepackaged advanced formulas. And under the drop down, I can see the powerful sliding window, which allows us to do calculations across rows up and down, percentage of group, rank, period over period, which we are looking for here, change from previous and running total. So our exercise requires period over period. I just select period over period. And obviously I only have one metric, A, sum of amount, it's month over month because it's group by month over month and change percentage. I want to keep it as percentage and this is the format. Since I'm talking about format, please note that this format overrides the XMD or the fields format. So for example, right now I, I created a POP. If I went to fields back on the lens and added under derived measures POP and I tried to add a format, that format will be overwritten by the format of the compare table. So take note that the compare table format is the highest format applicable to the derived metrics. So this is period over period. I'm done. I can hit apply. And there you go. This is my metric. 
And you can see the first one is null because there's nothing before it, so it's comparing it to null, and then the other percentages. Usually we end the exercise at this stage, but it, I want to show the other things we can do with the function itself. So if I scroll up and down um, and I hit apply, I'm going to hit close here and then go back to edit this column. Notice it's POP right now. So I'm going to edit this column. Behind the scene, there was a big formula. It's pretty much what I did in the UI. The fact that I dropped down selected period over period created this for me. Things that you can lightly edit, for example, if you see this is a, a minus right here, or an, uh, indicating a null, it's actually not a minus, it's, it's a dash. And if you don't want the dash, you can actually use one of the functions, which is coalesc, it's listed here. You can say coalesc, big bracket, I mean one bracket, comma, zero. And what this does is replace that null with a zero, because that's what coalesc does. So I added coalesc with open bracket, and then a comma zero, close the bracket, hit apply, and there you go, that's a zero now. You could similarly add round, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So those are some of the tips uh, and tricks, again, you can use with the functions, f of x and the formula, all of these together. So I'm going to hit close, and notice I am not stuck with the table, so I can always go back to the charts, and I can hit combo chart, for example, and now I have a combo chart. Things we're not going to cover necessarily right now, but think about the added metric. We can actually uh, sort within, sort within group. And since this is a combo chart and needs two metrics, if it did not need two metrics, I would be able to hide this, and we'll cover this in a bit now. Now that I'm done with my step, I'm going to hit done. This is maybe a fourth way. Again, I could grab, drag the chart and bring it, but it's already, it knows what it wants to be as a combo chart. I can directly drag it. This means on the dashboard, on the canvas, it's automatically, automatically going to create for that step the widget that contains it as a combo chart. And I'm going to give it a name, P over P, just for simplicity. And the theme is going to be dark, widget style, background, dark. And let's do some uh, slight editing for the legend. Make it top, center. Take out measure by unchecking show legend header. And uh, I'll keep it like this for now. Now, oh, one more thing is some users like the dual axis mode. So if you go to combo chart and you click on small multiples, dual axis will project these over one axis. Notice in the spring 19, uh, we're going to have some more of these uh, options or configure options on the combo charts. Now, before ending up, for, this is pretty much for the compare table. So again, use it anytime you want to derive a metric. Now, there are also other creative ways, not only for deriving metrics, but for example, for custom order or hidden order. If you remember from the recipe chapter where we created one dot qualification, two-dot perception analysis, etc., for the uh, custom stage order. If we didn't do it on the, at the data set level, we can actually accomplish it using compare table. So I'm going to extend this a little bit farther and show you how we can creatively use the compare table for these cases. So again, I'm going to compare, uh, create a step. I'm not going to save this on the dashboard, so I'm just going to show it. I'm not going to give it a name. I'll group by stage assuming I don't have that custom stage order, and I'll keep it count of rows, no problem. The problem here is I cannot sort, I mean, if I sort descending or I sort ascending, it's about the metric, not about the P, the N, the value, the, ways I, the way I want the stage to be uh, correct. So I'm going to unsort this and go to compare table. Now in compare table, I am able, able to clone this, so let's just clone it. Then from the dropdown of the new column, edit this column. And we can call it hidden order. Now, 
what I can do is use the case statement. And case statement has a pretty much the same syntax across all layers of the product. So case statement goes something like this. Case, when a field equal or not equal, using exclamation mark and the parentheses or something, uh, or if it's a measure greater than or less, equal to something, then. And then when, the same field equal, then, so on, until you hit else and then end. So in our case, I want the stage. I am sorting the stage. So I can hit say, case, and I don't know the, the exact uh, API name of the stage or the system name. So from the drop down, search for stage or click on S, stage, that stage name. So case, and again, I inserted it the wrong place, stage. Case when stage name, let's say, is equal to, if I remember the values correctly, let's say perception analysis, then one. I'm going to copy the statements, control copy, control V. Let's say when it's qualification, then two, and so on. If I have nine of these, I'll continue doing nine. I'm just gonna do one more. When stage name, this time I'm gonna include, like our recipes, closed, one or because I can use this stage name equal closed lost then three else four and end so again your statements will look something like this when 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 uh, note that the field name ideally uh, the syntax understand without single quotes, but ideally you can also add single quotes just to have everything, um, you know, following the same standard. So the field itself with a single quote and the value itself, if it's a text, is double quote. If it's a number, as is the number. So now I'm getting this hidden order. Now that I've created these metrics or these values for the hidden order, I can hit apply. And notice my new metric, hidden order. I close this. Now, this is the sort. This is the one, the two, the three, the four that I want. So I'm going to go to my hidden order and say sort ascending. So now I have perception analysis first, qualification, close, lost, assuming the other ones were under the same category four. Now that I have my hidden order sorted correctly, it is hidden. I can go back, hide this column, go back to my bar chart, and now I have P, perception first, qualification second, closed loss and closed one, the same. Obviously now I didn't combine them. Um, in this case, maybe ideally it's still the derived field in the, in, the, in the recipes. But again, if you did not, if you kept them separated, this is a very neat way to do it using compare table. And there you go. And even we did not add the one dot, two dot, three dot. The other method, if we had used the uh, custom stage order, so if I go back to the first initial one, this is the custom stage order from the recipes. It has 1.2.3.4. So again, in this case, it's up to you. If you build it in the data layer, that's fine. If you're doing it in the designer, you can use the compare table. For now, there's actually one more method using SACL. Uh, but try to avoid cycle if you can do it with compare table. And if the users ever ask about the 1.2. for the custom stage order from the uh, data set itself, well, you can always use fields, not here, in the lens exploration, to replace the 1. Dot again with the perception analysis. I hope this sums it up for compare table. Uh, there's a lot of things. I'm going to close this. It's not part of the dashboard, but just wanted to show you how you can creatively use the compare table. And again, keep an eye on compare tables. They are a very, very powerful tool.